Chris Sewell here, baseball card collector, investor, dealer in that order. Welcome everyone to this week's regular rollers. This week's list is brought to you by Greg Morris Cards. More on them coming up in just a bit, but let's go ahead and get started here. First one is sent up by Jensen Road. I just wanted to show off some auctions I saw that ended at shockingly low prices. I know Prism Baseball isn't that popular, but Manny Machado is well on his way to being a Hall of Famer. 51 career war in his age 29 season while having his best year on a rising team. You'd think his card prices would rise, but I haven't seen a significant jump. Uh, yeah, I totally agree. I know I've, I've mentioned Machado you know, a few times before. I think his card values are a little lower than, than they, they would otherwise seem to be based on his career trajectory. Just you know, other players with comparable careers are, are, are have much more valuable, uh, much, much higher card prices. This is his Prism Rookie. It's a red Pulsar Prism. Now, Prism doesn't have licensing from Major League Baseball. So a lot of baseball collectors don't don't go for Prism, and that definitely hurts the value significantly here. But it's a PSA eight again, a rookie red Pulsar Prism for nine bucks. I mean, you know, certainly nothing wrong with that. And you know, if this was a basketball card or a football card, a rookie card from 2013 of a comparable player, this would be hundreds of dollars. So, uh, yeah, I think nine bucks here, certainly nothing wrong with that. Next one is sent in by Paul, who wrote, "I picked up this 1982 Salvador Sanchez boxing card." I got it for just $115 plus tax and fees. I think it's in great value and in great condition. I think I will get it graded by SGC, hoping for an 8 or higher. Sanchez's story is fantastic. He's considered to be possibly the most talented featherweight boxer of all time. He was killed early in his career, but had only one loss uh, and over 40 wins. What are your thoughts? I cannot wait to get this card from the seller. Yeah, so I'm not actually familiar with this card. I'm not even familiar with Salvador Sanchez. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about boxing, but... Uh, it's one of the beauties of the hobby, you know, always always more cards to discover, more players to learn about who you, you never heard of. And uh, here's, a, you know, a good example, at least in, in my case. And yeah, if he's, you know, as, as significant in boxing history as, as you're as you're saying here, then and this is his rookie. I don't know if it is, but it looks like it's probably one of his first cards, Panini from 1982. Uh, yeah, I think that's a, a really cool card, and especially if that's, you know, something you enjoy collecting. Here's an interesting one sent in by Grant, and I'm not, uh, you know, something I certainly did not know. He wrote, with the changing landscape of collegiate athletes and the ability for athletes to profit from NIL, cards featuring collegiate football players are being produced. Quinn Ewers was the top recruit in the country and actually skipped his senior year of high school to profit on NIL and attend Ohio State. Ewers signed a three-year deal with GTSM worth $1.4 million in total as an autograph deal. Ewers is now the starting quarterback at Texas. It is far too early to say if he'll be an NFL star, but his current Leaf Auto can be purchased for $20 to $30. I recently bought this one for $20 plus shipping. With insane money being spent on young NFL quarterbacks, I think a $20 pre-rookie auto is a low risk as there is a, as there is very high upside for the card in the future. Imagine if Mahomes, Herbert, uh, Josh Allen, or you know, had pre-rookie autos and you could pick one up for $20. Not saying I believe Ewers will be the next Mahomes, but I think the pre-rookie auto market has a lot of upside if you can invest in the right players. Really interesting. I, I didn't know that. And uh, yeah, I mean, without thinking about it too much off the top of my head, that seems like a great potential sort of high upside, low low, low downside situation, you know, especially at 20 bucks here for, you know, a potential, you know, star quarterback down the road. This one was sent out by Philip, who wrote, Something feels off to me about how cheap Frank Robinson cards are. People were going crazy when Wander Franco came up and was able to tie the rookie on base streak, but no one was noting that the, the record was set by Frank Robinson. Uh, and took until Pete Alonso in 2019 to break Robinson's 1956 home run record as a rookie in the AL 38. And now Aaron Judge just came close to winning the Triple Crown. Uh, the last time that had been accomplished in the American League was by Frank Robinson. But Frank Robinson cards cost nothing compared to the modern players who are matching only one aspect of the game of his game uh he, he also won a triple crown the mvp in both the al and the nl world series mvp and then went on to become the first black manager and win manager of the year in 1989 for all this to say i got a frank robinson autograph for just eight bucks yeah totally agree and this is legit a legit auto this 1994 nabisco nabisco came out with the set just i think it was just the one year in 1994 and they had a whole whole bunch of all-time great sign uh, autographs and the certificates on the on the back so this is a very legit uh, autograph in eight bucks. I mean, you know, I've mentioned Frank Robinson before on the channel. I, you know, vintage wise, he's one of the most undervalued players, I think. You know, most sort of advanced stats show him as like a top 10 hitter of all time, or, you know, maybe top 15 hitter of all time, something like that. And his card prices just do not reflect that. He's probably ahead of like Mickey Mantle on the all time lists if you were to use advanced stats. And, you know, if this was a Mantle card, this would be hundreds of dollars. But here, the Frank Robinson auto, go, uh, auto goes for just uh, eight bucks. This one's edited by Tyler, who wrote, I bought these two 1914 B18 blankets, number 15A, Ty Cobb, brown infield, Beckett authenticated, 
Paid $700 for the first and $800 for the second. Beckett is only uh, graded two, giving number grades, giving, receiving a four and a six. And I'm unsure about the pop for auth uh, authenticated only. SGC has authenticated five with none graded, uh, none given number grades. And PSA, PSA appears to have never graded any or authenticated any. I had never seen or ever even heard of these prior to the first one being offered to me. After a little research, I found that these are extremely rare and some are extremely expensive. A raw copy of this blanket sold a couple of years ago for about uh, $500. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't even recognize these. Very, very cool. And, you know, when you get back this old, so these are, you know, over 100 years old at this point, there's a lot of sort of really, really rare, unique oddball items uh, with very, very low pops. And, yeah, Ty Cobb here, 1914, this is during his playing days. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I'm learning, I'm learning quite a bit this week. This one was sent by Mike, who just wrote, It's a Topps Triple Thread card of NFL quarterbacks who are either in the Hall of Fame already or will be in the coming years. Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Ben Roethlisberger, and Jay Cutler are all highlights for me on the card. Uh, check it out. Yeah, I think the Topps Triple Thread cards are, are really cool. They can be pricey, uh, but this is a 2008 Topps Triple Threads booklet, and you got six six guys on there. You get the jerseys on all six. And, of course, Tom Brady and Peyton Manning, all-time greats. Ben Roethlisberger is obviously going to be in the Hall of Fame one day. I think those three players represent 11 Super Bowl wins, so that's pretty uh, impressive. You also got Car Carson Palmer and Jay Cutler. I, I don't know if they'll make the Hall of Fame. Maybe they'll both be sort of you know, in the discussion at some point. I would guess neither of them will make it, but both very, very solid quarterbacks for a long time. And then uh, Derek Anderson, sort of the odd man out here, but uh, still a very, very cool card that goes for uh, that went for $144.50. This card's numbered out of 13, if everyone, anyone was uh, wondering. All right, now it's time for our fake of the week. This was sent by Sam, who wrote, uh, this is what I think is a, two th a fake 2,000 playoff contenders Tom Brady. At the time I sent this in, it had 60 bids for over $1,000. First off, the auto looks reprinted and it's not graded and the serial number is 12, which I think most fakes have because of its his jersey number. But this does have the eBay authenticity guarantee, so it will probably be refunded. Yeah, this card is definitely a fake. Uh, the front, yeah, just, I mean, I wouldn't be 100% sure just from the front photo. It looks like a fake from the front photo, but it, it could just be the photo. Uh, but the back is clearly wrong. It's serial numbered out of 100. That's not what the serial number looks like. Well, first of all, the regular card, the, the rookie ticket doesn't have a serial number, so there should be no serial number. The championship ticket parallel has a serial number to 100. This is not the championship ticket parallel, so it shouldn't have a serial number. But the championship ticket parallel, which does have the serial number, the serial number does not look like that. It's gold, not uh, black. So this is obviously a fake. Uh, it went for $2,550 uh, in auction, but it does have the eBay authenticity guarantee. So it's going to go there, and it's going to get rejected, uh, get returned. The buyer is going to get refunded, and the card will go back to the uh, original seller. So that's an example of a uh, good... Good results coming from the uh, eBay Authenticity Guarantee Program. This was ended by James, who wrote, Wondering what your thoughts are on investing in low-grade vintage like this card here that I recently purchased. I find it to be a fun, cheap way to get iconic and otherwise expensive cards. But yeah, this is a 1957 Topps Hank Aaron. It's obviously in low grade, got some creasing and, you know, rounded corners and some scuffing on the surface. I, I'm sure it would grade a, a 1 from PSA. Uh, quick side note, this actually picture is a reverse negative. Uh, Hank Aaron's a right-handed batter. You can see he's shown there lefty. The, the photo is reversed. So if you look at like the fours on his shirt, you can see it's actually backwards. But it, it was an uncorrected error, so that doesn't add any any extra value. But just a quick side note there. But yeah, this is a fourth year card of Hank Aaron. 1954 is his rookie. Is 1957. This is a big money card in high grade. Here, you know, in very presentable low grade, got it for under a hundred dollars. And yeah, from a collector standpoint, I think that's a great option. I mean, you got an original Hank Aaron fourth year card. You know, 60 years old here for under a hundred dollars. A great way to get a, an iconic card for an affordable you know dollar amount as a seller you know i can say whenever i have a card like this a high you know high-end card that is in really really low grade they always sell really really fast there are a lot of collectors who like this sort of stuff they want to have the original cards they want to have the, the big names from those eras but you know can't pay big bucks so we'll, we'll gladly take the low grade stuff so it's it's stuff that sells really quick for me and i'm sure most dealers from a purely like investment standpoint, I don't know that I would recommend targeting low-grade cards unless you're dealing with really, really, really rare old vintage stuff. But, uh, but you know, I would also say this card's probably not going to lose value. I think, you know, in the past, cards like this have done a good job holding their value. I don't know that they've shown like really impressive growth or anything in value over the, over the years, but not something I would expect to, to go down either. And now another card from 1957. Here's a 1957 Topps. Louis Aparicio, uh, who he's a he's a Hall of Famer, although sort of like a a low end Hall of Famer, we'd I'd say the cards are raw, kind of like the Hank Aaron, although this one not in low grade. This one's in in really really sort of high grade, we'll say. You can see nice uh, nice crisp image on the front and on the back provided on the listing. 
The listing here was uh, done by Greg Morris Cards, who, as I mentioned at the beginning, is sponsoring this episode. I was actually the seller. I, I, I consigned this card to Greg Morris, and they sold it for me. And you can see it went for $158 in auction. That is way more than I could possibly get for this card in any other platform. If I sold this through ComC, you know, I might get 20 30 bucks. If I sold it on my own eBay store, I wouldn't get anywhere near this. But the reason uh, it fetched such a high price is because Greg Morris Cards has such a great reputation with grading raw vintage, you know, they can see in the, you can see in the title they, they labeled this near mint mint or better. Uh, that the buyers know and trust that there's not going to be some hidden issue with the card. They know the card is going to arrive near mint mint or better, and so they're willing to pay the premium on on you know raw vintage for that exact reason. They've been in the hobby a long time with a fantastic reputation. Great place to both buy and sell cards. I'm a customer on both ends, and I recommend you give them a try. I've included a link to both their eBay store and their website in the description below. This was sent by Daniel, who wrote, I, I offered $200 for this Corey Seager BGS 9.5 Topps Chrome Rookie Auto Blue Refractor at a 150 The seller counted at 235 I recounted at 220 and he accepted. He just shipped it, so I should have it in hand soon. Uh, $238 after taxes all in is, I believe, a steal for my favorite player, who is a perennial All-Star World Series MVP and just had an All-Star season in his first season with the Rangers, who should be in the playoff hunt soon with all the young talent they have, not to mention it is an awesome color match. The card is also interesting because of the subgrades, 10 on centering and 9 on corners. Do you think it could be a PSA 10? Lastly, if I'm able to get this amazing of a card uh, of a player that has already accomplished so much, who is still in his prime for only $238 after taxes, uh, sell your overhyped prospects now. Yeah, nice card. If you're a, you know, a Corey Seager collector or if you believe in Corey Seager long term, this is a great great card to have. It sort of checks all the important boxes. You know, uh, Key brand in the hobby, Topps Chrome, check. It's a, it's a refractor, check. It's an auto, check. It's a rookie, check. It's high grade, BGS Gem Mint 9.5 checks, so it sort of checks all the important boxes in, in that sense. In terms of cross grading it to PSA, you know, I, I it certainly wouldn't I certainly wouldn't uh, cross grade it, send it in in the Beckett holder to PSA. They're gonna they're gonna see the nine corners and they're not gonna give it a ten would be my guess. And you could crack it out of the case and try PSA, but you know PSA is really strict giving out ten, so I would sort of recommend against that uh, that idea. This was sent by Tom, who wrote, I was completing my childhood 1973 Topps football set, and I discovered I needed the Ken Stabler rookie card. Raw versions were selling for 25 to 30 in decent shape, so I came across this listing for the 1973 Oakland Raiders team set. The picture showed a group of cards that were all in near-mint condition. I made an offer of $36 and won the auction for $44.95 with tax and shipping. I was able to pick up a very nice Stabler card, but didn't realize this team set includes nine Hall of Famers and the Jack Tatum Hall of Fame rookie card as well. All the cards are in fantastic shape. Sometimes we need to think outside the box when looking for a single card. It might be part of a, a, a group of other good cards. Yeah, really nice pickup here for a great price. The, the Ken Stabler, you know, if it's X Mint or better, is probably worth the price of the entire lot. And like you said, there's also a Jack Tatum. He's a Hall of Famer. He's a Hall of Famer. And that's his rookie. And there's also Art Shell, another Hall of Famer uh, rookie card. So you actually have three Hall of Famers rookie cards in this collection. And I think, like you said, nine Hall of Famers. This was just a stacked. Uh, Raiders team from uh, the 1980s, so nice uh, nice pickup here. All right, and we'll finish on a vintage bargain. A lot of vintage this week, which makes Chris a happy boy. This was sent in by Sean, who wrote, I have been interested in acquiring a Jackie Robinson card from his playing days, but he doesn't have many releases from Tops, and the cost for mid-grade copies is often in the four figures. As a result, I began looking for, for alternatives. I found that in 1955, there was a release, a golden stamp book that contained not one, but two Jackies in it, the pop report for these is very low, around 150 for the stamp and about 10 for the hand-cut image on the cover. I managed to win one of these books with the stamp sheets in virgin condition for uh, just $164. What makes this purchase more interesting is the stamp of uh, Sandy Koufax is also in the book. This is a little-known Sandy Koufax rookie, 1955, not even mentioned in the listing title. The total pop for the Koufax is 150 versus 9,000 for his more common tops rookie, uh, unreal. Yeah, really cool. I, I was familiar with these, but I didn't I didn't remember them coming in the book like this. But uh, yeah, you get two two Jackie Robinson cards and, and, and the Sandy Koufax alternative rookie. I like, uh, you know, good job thinking sort of outside the box to be able to buy cards for your collection that are that are more affordable. But that's it for this week's regular rollers. Thank you everyone for watching and thank you everyone for all the great submissions, whether I used your listing or not. Get a lot, so don't get to use them all, but really appreciate it. Uh, eat your vegetables, look both ways before crossing the street. What were some of the ones you all left in the comments? Uh, don't pee into the wind. Don't eat the brown snow. There's some quality potty humor for you right there. Thanks, everyone.